a American sunset since that's the, the name, name of, of our boat. boat. We have just like the sun setting and then we're gonna paint the boat. The idea is the mini boats sail by wind and ocean currents, and then students track their progress via GPS. Other groups have sailed boats like these across the Atlantic, but no one has crossed the Pacific. And that caught the imagination of Nate Sandal. I saw this really cool tool, and I thought, what sort of education program could we build around this tool? And that sort of led to what sort of country are we connected to via currents and weather? Japan. It might seem far-fetched to think that some tiny boat glued together by 10-year-olds could sail 5,000 miles across the Pacific on its own. But there is a local precedent. In 2011, the tsunami that struck Japan swept pieces of a temple out to sea, and they crossed the ocean to wash up right here in Gearhart. We sat back, kind of like the top of a temple thing that was really important to them, and it washed up on our beaches. We were just like, whoa, how did it get all the way here? Inspired, Nate worked with Japan's consul general in Portland to partner up several local classes with classes in Japan. To top it off, he paired Gearhart Elementary with a class in the town where the shrine came from, Okuki. The way it works is each American class builds two boats, one it will launch and one it will send to Japan for its partner class to launch. Well, how are we with our letters? Are we working on them? Dear Mayor, we have partnered up with the Kuki Elementary School for our minibus project. We are really excited about it. We have named our boat the American Sunset. Sincerely, the creators of Gearheart Elementary. Nice job. Next, press release. After months of work, the Gearheart class heads to Astoria. <laughs> to set the American sunset on its maiden voyage. It's a maritime tradition that from every boat christening, you need to smash a bottle of champagne, or in our case, sparkling cider, onto the boat for good luck. Go for it, hard as you can. Oh dear. Good job. Nate helps the classes find captains who will take the miniboats far enough out to sea that they won't immediately wash back ashore. The Gearhart class chose Astoria's Columbia River bar pilots so that Nate could go along. One of the biggest decisions that the students have to make is where are they going to launch their boats from? They look at all of the ocean currents over the last 12 months to get an idea of how they're running. And they also look at the prevailing wind patterns. Other classes have had southbound freighters launch their miniboats off Baja, hoping they'll catch the North Equatorial Current to Japan. The Gearhart class chose the mouth of the Columbia, with the hope their boat would ride the Alaska Current to cross the Pacific to the north. So you want the sail to starboard, right? For sure. I'm feeling excited. It's sort of like sending your kid away to college. You know, you're, you're happy for them to spread their wings, but you're going to miss them. All right, ready? Keep going. Boat's been a weekly part of my life since September, and those kids, all their hard work has made this happen, and so it's, it's a real exciting, bittersweet moment. The American sunset isn't the only thing bound for Japan, though. Every year, Nate packs up the miniboats American students build for their partner classes, navigates them through airport security, and travels the 5,000 miles to deliver them himself. The boats arrive with gifts from the American students. Then the Japanese students finish decorating the boats. They stage their own maritime ceremony. And then local sailors set the boats on their course.
Destination America. Okay, so they're thinking, Sophia, it's at 40 degrees, so we can move it slightly north. Back in Gearhart, students track the boats via their daily GPS transmissions. So I just wanted to start out and show you a map of all of the boats that have been launched into the ocean so far. What do you notice about the American sunset that no other boat has done? Yes. It has gone down farther um, down to San Francisco Bay. Yeah. And I got really excited because if the boat gets to about here, it's going to hit those trade winds. You would take the trade winds. It would be the fastest way to go. It makes me feel proud of myself because I just never felt like I could really build anything that can go all the way across the ocean to Japan. The American Sunset is one of 20 mini boats in Nate's program that are now circumnavigating the Pacific, trying to find their way through a world of seagulls and dolphins, wind and waves. One crashed in Alaska, one washed up in Baja, but others are more than halfway across. One even found its way almost to the South Pacific before beaching on a tiny atoll named Tarawa. The boats that crash or give me heart attacks and anxiety because they're hugging on shore, I think those are the real exciting ones. That's because each hole carries a message in multiple languages asking finders to take it to the nearest classroom. And then Nate works with that class and local sailors to get the boat fixed up and back on course. Sort of what the cool thing is, every time this boat lands somewhere, we're engaging a new group of people. So yeah, it is definitely making a huge community around the Pacific. And that's the point. While it would be amazing if one day Nate gets a call that one of the boats made it across, the project is really about introducing students on both sides of the Pacific to the wider world beyond their shores. It kind of seems like the world is small, but it really is big and is wow because it's a totally different new like country and continent and it's all the way across the other side of the world. When those Gearhart students are going for a walk on the beach with their parents, I want them to look out over the Pacific Ocean and wonder, where's my mini boat? What kind of conditions is it going through? The biggest thing that I want is to sort of instill a sense of wonder 